Fusion Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Aquaculture. Aquaculture is the study and production of fish, shrimp, and other aquatic food organisms. While fish farming is the act of rearing selected species of fish under scientifically controlled conditions in enclosed bodies of water, such as the pond, rivers, streams, etc., where they grow, breed, and are harvested for consumption or sale. Some terms associated with fish farming are the fingerlings, the fisheries, the fish, fishes, pond, gas, fry, shore, hatchery, and the aquarium. Fingerlings are newly hatched fishes or fish. Fishery is the study of fish and fishes. Fish refers to a particular species regardless of the number or quantity, while fishes refers to the different species of fish. A pond is an artificial body of water where fish or fishes can be reared while gears are equipment used in harvesting fish. A fry refers to young fishes or baby fishes, while a shawl is a group of fish or fishes. A hatchery is a unit where fish eggs are incubated and hatched artificially into fish. The aquarium is an artificial fish pond kept for aesthetic or entertainment purposes at home. The importance of fish farming can be seen in its ability to provide fish which serves as a source of food, for example, protein to man and livestock. Fish farming also provides a means of recycling waste, for example, animal dogs from farms, factories, and sewage disposal systems. It also provides a means of increasing the availability of protein to people at reduced cost. Fish farming provides employment and income to many people. Fish farming can generate foreign exchange to a nation, especially when fish are exported to other countries. It is also useful in the area of research work and other educational purposes. When sighting a fish pond, there are certain conditions that are necessary to be considered. They are adequate water supply, the soil in the area, vegetation of the area, topography of the area, availability of fast-growing fish, and the availability of supplementary feed stock. There must be constant water supply of good quality and quantity. The water can be from streams, rivers, lakes, irrigation canals, springs, etc., Good quality water is necessary because it will provide oxygen and food to fish, create a medium for waste discharge and reproduction. The water should not have a bad smell, taste or color and should not be too muddy and must be free from pollution. Soil in the area must be fertile so as to supply nutrients to the fish. It should be clay because of its ability to hold water, which is very important in fish pond construction. Soil with too much sand or gravel is not good and would not retain water. Vegetation of the area. Low vegetation, especially grassland, are preferred. Woody sites are not suitable because clearing and stumping will greatly increase the cost of setting up the fish pond. In topography, the shape of the land should allow for easy draining and filling of pond with water. The water must flow from a place that is higher than the pond so that the water can flow into the pond directly. If not, the need for water pumps would arise and this will increase the cost of the project. Fish ponds can be constructed on a flat or level ground but lots of soil have to be removed to create this slope. Fingerlings or baby fish for stocking a fish pond should be the type that can grow fast and mature within a very short time. The use of improved varieties or breeds in stocking fish pond 
makes fish farming more profitable. In the availability of supplementary feedstock, supplementary feeding is done to ensure rapid growth of fish and allow high stocking density. Artificial or compound feeds in form of pellets are used to supplement the natural feed or the plankton. The addition of fertilizers also promotes the rapid growth of plankton or natural fish food in the pond. Fishes can be classified based on their habitat and based on body structure. Based on habitat, we have the freshwater fish and the saltwater fish. While based on body structure, we have the bony fishes and the cartilaginous fishes. Freshwater fishes are those fishes that live in fresh water. That is, the water does not contain salt. Examples of such fresh water include the pond, rivers, streams, and lakes. And examples of fishes in this group are the perch, the tilapia, the mudfish, etc. While saltwater fish are fishes that live in water containing salt, such as lagoons, oceans, and seas. And examples of such fishes are the salmons, the mackerel, the shark, the rays, etc. Classification based on body structure. The bony fishes are those fishes that possess bony skeletons. For example, the tilapia, the mudfish, the carps, the catfish, the salmon, etc. Majority of these fishes are found in fresh water. While the cartilaginous fishes are fishes that possess soft bones composed of cartilages. Majority of these fishes are found in salt water and examples include the dolphin, the shark, the dogfish and rays. The essential features of a standard fish pond include dam, core trench, distribution channel, spillway, boards, screen, dam, slope or inner and outer. The dam is a large area of the pond that holds water. It ensures the availability of water in the pond. The core trench is the excavated portion of the fish pond. It consolidates the walls with stones and cement. The distribution channel is the area which helps to introduce water into the pond. Water is distributed to all the sections of the pond until it gets to a particular volume. Fertilizers can equally be mixed up with the water and distributed together. The spillway is a passage for water to flow over or around the dam. It is positioned at one end of the dam. It uses wood or wire meshed screen. The monk regulates water level automatically in the pond. It helps in the discharge of water from both the surface and the bottom. It has vertical, low, and horizontal culverts or pipes. They are constructed with concrete. The boards are structures which regulate the flow of water. They are made up of desirable wood and also hold water inside the pond. They are fitted at the center or middle of the slabs at the gate. The screens are structures that help to prevent the entry of undesirable species of fish into the pond. They also prevent the fish from moving out of the pond. Well, the dam slope or the inner and outer helps to regulate water movement into and out of the pond. It also ensures the availability of water in the pond and is usually constructed at the beginning and end of the pond. The following operations are normally carried out when establishing a fish pond. They include site selection, recognizance of general survey, clearing and stomping of sites, construction of dam, construction of core trench, construction of spillway, impoundment of pond, liming, pond fertilization, pond inoculation, and the stocking of pond. In the site selection, site selection involves the choice of best site based on necessary conditions like a piece of land through which a stream flows.
The site should be on a fertile and clay soil to prevent seepage of water. It should have a valley with narrow neck and a fairly open area. Recognizance or general survey. A recognizance or general survey. Here, detailed survey of the chosen site should be carried out, especially by extension workers. Such workers help to determine the height of pond, volume of air to be used for dike, total water surface area, volume of water in the pond or the embankment. In clearing and stumping of sites, this involves the removal of trash, cutting of trees and removal of stones. And the construction of dam, dam is usually constructed across the stream. Materials used in the construction should be of good quality. Clay soil should be used for dam construction because of its ability to hold water. In the construction of core trench, this involves the removal of the soil or excavation. It is positioned at right angle to the dam. Such dam should be made with consolidated stones or cement walls. In the construction of spillway, spillway is positioned at one end of the dam. Wood and wire mesh screen should be used to construct the spillway. Impoundment of pond involves the filling of the pond with water by opening the monk board of the reservoir. This leads to the release of water and flow to fill the pond. Liming involves the addition of limestone or calcium carbonate powder to the sides and bottom of the pond to seal pores and prevent water loss. Liming also reduces acidity of the pond water and encourages the growth of plankton, that is, fish food. However, liming is done before filling the pond with water. The lime materials should be left for four weeks in its dry state. Pond fertilization. Fertilizer encourages the growth of plankton. Pond fertilization is done by pouring organic fertilizers such as poultry droppings, cow dung, or the use of inorganic ones like the MPK or superphosphate. Pond fertilization should be carried out 15 days before stocking pond with water. The pond inoculation. This is introduction of proper plankton, that is the proper fish food species, into the pond. This is done by obtaining some water from a plankton-rich pond and pouring it into a newly fertilizer pond. When the pond water begins to turn green, this green water indicates the abundance of natural food or fish. To keep the water green, fertilizer is added into the pond every week. The stocking of pond is introduction of the proper baby fish called fingerlings or fries into the pond. The pond is stocked at the rate of two fingerlings per square meter. The fingerlings should not be poured into the pond, rather the container should be placed gently into the water and the fingerlings allowed to swim into the water pond themselves. Processing and Preservation of Fish Harvested fish is either consumed, sold or preserved for future use. Fish processing involves the removal of scales, fins, guts and gills. The remaining part is then cooked or fried for eating. Byproducts of fish processing include the fish meal, the fish scale, the cod liver oil, the fish skin. Fish can be preserved for future use by salting, smoking, sun drying, freezing, and canning. Salting is application of salt on the fish. It prevents the growth of spoilage organisms. Smoking is the drying of fish over naked fire. It reduces the moisture content and increases the taste and flavor of the fish. Sun drying involves the drying of fish using heat from the sun. In this process, fish can only be stored for a short time. Freezing involves the use of cold storage like refrigerators and deep freezers to store fish over a very long time. While canning involves the storage of processed and consumable fish in cans under special conditions 
for future consumption. For example, we have the sardine. Method of fish harvesting. Examples of fishing tools or gears commonly used to harvest fish or fishes are the fishing tools and gears, fishing nets, the trapping, the electrofishing, drainage of pond, use of ultrasonic, and we have the impaling. Fishing nets are generally used for the harvesting of fish from either ponds, rivers, lakes, streams, oceans, or sea. There are various kinds of nets commonly used, like we have the scoop net, the gill net, the sailing net, the fishing trawlers, the fishing basket, and the hook and line. While trapping involves the setting of traps to catch fish, it involves the use of gears made from ropes or raffia woven into various models of enclosures for capturing fishes. They are set along water courses and any fish that enters the trap will not be able to get out but remains there until it is caught by the fishermen. Netting Netting involves the use of various types of nets to catch fish. Nets like gill nets, clap nets, trawl nets, etc. which have been woven into various sizes and thickness are thrown into water to catch fish. We also have electro fishing as a method of fish harvesting. Electro fishing involves the use of electricity to catch fish by creating electric fields in an enclosed area such that current is sent across killing fishes between poles. It can only be used for total harvesting of fish. Draining of ponds involves draining of pond water for easy use of net to catch large fishes. While the use of ultrasonic is the use of an instrument which can make sound in water and attract fishes so that they can easily be trapped or harvested using other means of harvesting. The impaling involves the use of spears or harpoons to attack and catch big fishes. Basic laws and regulation of fishing. Fishing regulation is a set of rules and laws governing the exploitation and other practices of fishery resources, especially in open access water. In other words, fishery regulations are laws made by the government in order to control and protect fish harvesting so that they do not go into extinction and for them to be in regular supply from time to time. Fishing regulations or decree in Nigeria was promulgated in 1971 during General Yakub Gowon's regime. The regulations are the close season, the catch quota, the med size regulation, the regular stocking, the population control, prevention of vessels, ban on the use of explosives, ban on the use of poisonous materials, the landing tax, the allocation of fishing areas, restriction on breeding section, ban on discharge of pollutants or toxic substance. The closed session is a regulation in which no fishing is permitted to take place for a given period of time. This allows the smaller fishes to grow and mature. The catch quota is a form of control in which a fisherman is allowed to catch a specific quantity of fish or regulating the number of fishermen by issuing them fishing permits or licenses at a specific amount. The mesh size regulation involves the use of a particular mesh or net size such that only the matured fishes are caught, thus protecting the young ones. Regular stocking involves the addition of compatible species of fish to increase the population of fishes in water. The population control. This involves the use of other fish types like the carriers or the catfish to eat up tilapia or early harvesting to prevent overpopulation. In the prevention of vessels, no vessels except the canoes shall fish within the first two nautical miles of the water of the Nigerian continental shelf. In the ban on the use of explosives, the use of explosive substances for fishing is prohibited 
because it often results in the death of both the mature and the young fishes. In the ban on the use of poisonous materials, the use of obnoxious or poisonous matter is prohibited because it also results in the death of both matured and the young ones. The landing tax should be introduced such that total catch and sizes of fish should be taxed at the site of landing. In the allocation of fishing areas, fishing areas are allocated to individual fishermen so as to curb indiscriminate interference within large fishing areas. In the restriction on breeding section law, the breeding section of water should be identified so as to restrict fishing in that section. And in the ban on discharge of pollutant or toxic substance, pollutant or toxic materials should not be discharged into the waters. Ways of making fishing regulations effective in Nigeria. There are several ways in which fishing regulations can be made effective in Nigeria. They include the use of local or native languages, wide publicity to create awareness, simple presentation to fishermen, use of law enforcement agents, revocation of licenses, and the prosecution of defaulters. In the use of local or native languages, the fishery regulations should be written and made available in local or native languages. And in the simple presentation to fishermen, the regulations should be presented to the fishing community of fishermen in very simple ways. The regulations should be given wide publicity using the television, radio, posters, leaflets, or handbills in order to bring such to the awareness of the people. And in the use of law enforcement agents, appropriate law enforcement agents should be used to enforce the regulations. There should be revocation or withdrawal of licenses of defaulting fishermen and there should be prosecution of defaulting fishermen. To ensure the continuous availability of fish in the fish pond or to maintain high fish yield, it is necessary to ensure the regular feeding of fish or fishes, the weeding, the silting, aeration, constant supply of water, control of predators. The weeding is the removal of weeds from the pond. It allows the dissolution of oxygen in water, the penetration of sunlight to the bottom of the pond, which will promote growth of fish food. It also prevents the build-up of pests and diseases. The silting is the removal of silt or prevention of silt from entering into the pond. The silting makes the water to be clean, promotes easy movement of fish within the water, and also prevents pollution of the water. Aeration enables oxygen to dissolve in water, which is required by fish for respiration. Fishes usually come to the surface of water due to lack of oxygen in the water. Weeds, excessive organic manure, overstocking, etc. prevent proper aeration of the pond. The pond should always be filled with water and any leakage should be repaired. Predators like birds and snakes should be prevented from entering into the pond because they could eat up the fish in the pond. This can be done by keeping the surrounding of the pond clean by constant weeding. A fish pond can be maintained by preventing diseases that could kill the fish. By making sure that there is adequate feeding, stocking, temperature, weeding, manuring, etc. to help prevent diseases. There should also be regular harvesting, which is necessary to prevent overpopulation, outbreak of diseases, and cannibalism. Periodic or total harvesting could be done six months after stocking, using nets or by draining of the pond. Regular application of fertilizer should be done once in a month to promote the growth of fish food in the pond.